I'm Stuart Quinney. Um, most of you um, who are watching this probably have seen all the videos to date. If you haven't, have a look back, catch up a bit. Um, this story is in relation to the unbelievable treatment I've received from Polaris Britain uh, Limited in regards to the ownership of uh, two Indian motorcycles. Obviously, they're not cheap. You buy brand new, you expect a certain level of service, especially with a high-end motorcycle. As I've said in a lot of these videos, I've not received that treatment. In fact, the treatment I've received is um, well below par. This video is just to update a little bit in relation to the MCIA. Now the MCIA is the industry body that oversees or overlooks the motorcycle industry and they set certain standards. Now I will be looking to the screens a little bit because there's information on there I, I, I will briefly go through with you. In case you haven't um, gone through the process yourself this may help you a little bit. So the MCIA have set up these various standards in relation to how a motorcycle is advertised and promoted, as well as the performance from the delivery date to uh, potential warranty work. So I have a few issues with this. They clearly state that the representation from the manufacturer should be true and not misleading. So I've got 40,000 odd pound invested in a touring motorcycle, which the manufacturer has clearly put in writing to me that it's not fit for purpose for the roads in Britain or the UK and our climate, which I'm still astounded by. But their latest round of advertising is basically motorcycles riding across the desert. Looks like it's possible salt flats. And they're promoting these bikes as um, hard wearing and durable through these conditions. So then I have accusations from Owners Connections, Polaris Britain Limited and Polaris UK Tech that I'm riding my bike on dirt, dust and debris and have caused damage by riding it on the tarmac roads the sat-nav on the motorcycle has directed me to. So there seems to be one extreme to the other. They're advertising their bikes can be ridden across the desert and yet I have problems with the um, rear calipers on my motorcycle and it's my fault for riding it. So I'm supposed to leave it in a garage, am I? So I feel the definition from the MCIA is clearly been breached on the advertising. They clearly stated that it's not fit for purpose. So that is one of the uh, criteria that the MCIA, uh, MCIA need to make sure and keep an eye on their members that the bikes are fit for purpose. Now they've clearly stated it's not fit for purpose. So I obviously wrote to the MCIA, it didn't get a response for quite a while. I rang and then I got passed from pillar to post. I eventually got a reply, I think I said in the previous um, email, from Tony Campbell. He's like the CEO of the MCIA. And he's stating uh, four criteria. Vehicles have uh, received the proper safety checks prior to handover to customer. But as far as I can see, it, it probably did receive the proper che checks. Um, it wasn't till about a year later I started getting severe problems. Um, but the problems I had up to that date, we thought were settle in problems. So they weren't reported on as well as the rest of them, but it was a continual struggle. Products are fit for purpose and match the expectations set through pre-sales advertising. Tory motorcycle, designed for Tory. So that's what I've done. I've used it as a Tory motorcycle and I've kept it in good condition, very good condition. 
So as I've said previously, it's washed at least twice a week or after a long ride. And then it is serviced every 5,000 miles. But apparently that isn't sufficient according to Polaris UK, uh, Britain Limited. I have to do more rider maintenance. I have to do a stronger regime of maintenance. Now again, as in previous videos, I've requested for them to elaborate on that and to let me know what I need to be doing. No reply at all. So number three, manufacturers will meet their obligations are detailed in this document. Now I've read the document, I'm not gonna bore you with all, all of it, the code of practice of new motorcycles. They haven't met their obligations. Um, I followed the uh, complaints procedure that was listed out in this code of practice. I contacted the dealer who hasn't bothered to ever reply to me in writing. He's just basically sworn at me over the phone. I've then contacted the manufacturer or the, the distributor of Polaris Britain Limited who basically understand there was an issue but won't admit it. Um, so their uh, answer to that was, we have loads of solicitors, we'll make you go away. Which obviously they're doing now because they've blackballed me. Um, and then if there's a, just number four, if a dispute should occur, there is a complaints process. And if this is necessary, access to certified alternative um, dispute resolution, ADR. So I think I said in the last video, the NCS, that's who I was pointed to. And they spent just over a year in asking for information. Obviously in between time, I had this medical issue, which put me in hospital in intensive care. Um, so that delayed the process, as well as um, Polaris not giving me the information, the dealer not giving me the information that was required. So I was relying on all the email and all the email trail I had, because I put everything in email, um, which is just as well, but it doesn't really matter because nobody wants to look at it, nobody's interested. So, <laughs> a statement from this Tony Campbell, which I just can't believe. So having spoken, this is his words, having spoken with Polaris from reading the information, you have been provided. I am satisfied as a participating manufacturer of this scheme, Indian Motorcycles Polaris have fulfilled their obligations as set out and therefore MCIA are not able to support with this case any further. Unbelievable. As I did my um, parting comment, it's just a scheme for the big boys. They don't care about the consumer one iota. So I've provided them information that Polaris have admitted that the bike is not fit for purpose. I've provided them information that the um, authorized dealer by Polaris has not produced the correct paperwork, no service sheets, doesn't separate uh, parts from labor, and doesn't provide paperwork for warranty work. So apparently that's quite normal for an MCI member. I also stated to them that um, Polaris has said it's not fit for purpose and that I've not maintained the motorcycle to a sufficient manner. So it's my fault that the bearing failed at 14,000 miles. And it's my fault that the brakes continually failed for a five month period when it was in the dealer four times. And then on the fifth occasion, which was August 22, they managed to sort out the rear caliper and I haven't had a problem since. Not a major problem, <laughs> absolutely pathetic. The MCIA have sat back there and said, ah, we're not bothered. But I said, you know, everything's okay. We'll just go with the flow. So, Unfortunately, my advice to you, if you're buy, if you're making a decision on a motorcycle, whether it um, comes from a company that belongs to the MCA, I don't think it really makes a goddamn difference. No difference at all. So uh, my current situation is I'm um, obviously 
Um, still going through the process with the financial ombudsman. The ICO is looking at the uh, SRA infringements because now the dealer has failed to uphold a subject access request, which um, is a legal requirement, and they're just ignoring it as well. So we have Polaris doing that. I've got the dealer doing it now, and then Close Brothers. We've got this uh, problem going along with discretionary commissions. <sighs> They won't provide me paperwork and again I've issued an SRA on them and they've not complied to that either so it's just just a complete mess it just seems that the rules are put in place and certain key people and certain companies completely ignore these rules buy with confidence scheme complete waste of time so no I would not recommend the MCIA to anybody